Guys, Doug here from Motion Raceworks, here for episode two of Motion 360. This is the show where we talk about all the things that are actually relevant in car building cars. Um, we're going to talk about the real things, the, the real questions that I get on a day-to-day -day basis, the things I've learned, the things that actually work, so we're not trying to sell you a bunch of crap you don't need. Um, my goal here at Motion Raceworks is to sell you exactly what you need we're not the type of company that likes to sell you stuff where you have to buy it twice or um, redo things uh, where there's different stages. We want you to have the right stuff from day one. So today we're going to talk about silicone couplers and, for that matter, boost connectors overall. Now when I say boost connectors, I mean any device that takes one pipe and connects it to an intercooler, a uh, throttle body, or any of the above. When I started out in racing, there was just a couple options out there. There were V-bands, uh, which for me were way too expensive back then, and then there were silicone couplers. Um, since then, tons and tons of different options have come out. There's Wiggums clamps, there's uh, Vangen, I believe, all kinds of weird O-ring contraptions uh, that you weld to both ends, the throttle body, and uh, quick connects and quick releases and stuff. I'm here to tell you, uh, I think a lot of that is just getting you to spend a bunch of money on some fancy crap that you don't actually need. And, you know, I'm all for being fancy, uh, believe me. I spend a lot of money on stupid things on my car. But most of those things actually make it a little bit more difficult or a lot more difficult to use, to install, to uh, take apart and assemble. And for me, it's a uh, point of frustration when I'm at a race or when I'm working on my car, my God, those new clamps, you have to like push some O-ring together and cut your fingers down to the bone, but boy, does it look cool. So, you know, when people call and they're like, what should I use? Uh, you know, I'm gonna make tons of horsepower in this thing. I'm like, you really can't beat a silicone coupler and nice T-bolt clamps. And I'm being honest about that. Um, I have not seen anybody surpass that. Maybe getting into the pro mod world, some people might need some O-ring type of flange setups, but for the 95% of us, um, we won't and never will uh, surpass what a silicone coupler and two T-bolt clamps um, can do. For God's sakes, I remember Stevie Fast's orange Mustang back in the day had silicone coupler and T-bolt clamps, and I think they went, they went like 420s with a wild blower, methanol, big block Chevy setup. So, you know, he wasn't having an epidemic of blowing couplers off. So let me digress. I'm not trying to bash the companies that are making this stuff. Cool, more power to you, but I'm going to give you some real world advice because I don't like to waste a bunch of money on stuff. And more importantly, I hate struggling with working on cars. So bottom line, silicone coupler is the easiest thing to use. You slide it on, you bolt two bolts, uh, one on each side for the T-bolt clamp. Uh, occasionally you'll break one of those. You won't blow stuff off if you do it the right way. You won't overpower it. It's cheap, it's easy, it's effective. Basically, here's what you need. Um, your aluminum tubing or steel, um, your silicone coupler, notice it's not a foot long, pipes damn near touching in the middle, T-bolt clamps, and a good bead roller. Uh, I bought this bead roller from Vibrant a few years ago. Um, I think there's a couple of different companies that make them now. You only need one set of dies. Um, it's like a couple hundred bucks, maybe a little cheaper. If you think that's expensive, get together with a couple of your buddies. You guys buy one, you will thank me later. It's, I mean, you're going to spend way more on all these other goofy devices than you will on this. And this paired with this you're gonna have a good, effective cold side piping. So before I get into how I do silicone couplers and how I build piping, let's kind of make some ground rules here. You only ever use straight silicone couplers. That means no 45s, no 90s. You know, I know some people are better at fabricating than others and that's cool, we're all at different places. Always make an attempt to make that bend with the aluminum or steel or stainless so that you can use a straight silicone coupler because the 45 and the 90 give you a ton of surface area unsupported that you can then blow out you know the air is hitting that silicone instead of hitting an aluminum piece so of course it's going to turn into a damn balloon as it gets hot and cold uh, you put it through stresses it ages 
Um, some of the couplers are just crap from to begin with. So not to mention these 90s and 45s and stuff like that. They're expensive. You can buy a mandrel bend for that. So spend extra money on the piping. Don't spend it on the silicone couplers. So while we're at it, let's talk about silicone couplers. I sell a brand that I like. I have found this to be a good piece. Um, it's affordable. I can bring it to you guys for a good price. I can keep them in stock. Um, they're strong, they're durable, they work well, they're good quality, but there are a ton of good silicone couplers on the market. What you wanna do is make sure you get a four, five, six, seven ply coupler. You don't want this two or three ply crap. Um, Unfortunately for us, most of this stuff's made overseas, so my made in the USA just doesn't work very well for this uh, situation. Um, but nevertheless, just find a good coupler. Um, go with a good brand that you trust. We sell shit that we know works here. Um, no other reason. And we try to bring it to you affordably. So you're probably asking yourself, Doug, what do you do then? If you don't use any of this other stuff and you use silicone couplers, I'm blowing couplers off. Um, or, hey, do you guys sell the little boost straps? Don't need any of that stuff, in my opinion. Um, you know, if you fabricate your piping correctly and support it, if you have a big long run, make a mount or a bracket to mount it to the engine or something like that, just so it's not bouncing as you go down the track or the road. Um, a lot of that will put undue stress on the silicone couplers and make them tear or twist and contort. Um, just wear them out in general, but especially if you have lightweight aluminum tubing, um, short runs of it. Next, what you want to do, you don't want to have this much engagement in a silicone coupler on each side because then you have this much in between it. So if you're building piping, put the darn silicone coupler, basically make the two pieces touch um, in the middle and the silicone coupler is going to be your flex or your sealer. Um, see how I'm doing there? The silicone coupler isn't made to be piping. It's made to seal up two pipes connecting for easy installation and removal. Um, yeah, so it's not made to bridge a long area. That's why you see silicone couplers made in only three or four inch lengths. It's not made to be a foot long because then you have a bunch of unsupported area, uh, which air will make a balloon out of um, and or give you more opportunity to tear it. So almost always the rule of thumb is make the pipes or pieces, intercooler, piping, whatever, um, you're connecting two pieces together, make them damn near touch in the middle. Um, then you have using the silicone coupler for no more than a sealing device. So you're like, Doug, I need boost straps. You don't. I'm gonna show you what I do, and I can tell you for the large number of cars that I've built, I don't have couplers blow off. And that's not me being a snob. I just do not have an issue. It's just a tried and true method, and I guarantee it works for 98% of you. Surely some 2%er will blow a coupler off with 85 pounds of boost or 150 pounds of boost. I'm sorry, I'm probably wrong in that case. But for most of us running 20, 30, 40 pounds of boost, these fancy billet straps, things that you weld to your firewall and intake and your darn turbo piping and turbo, unnecessary. Um, just adds a lot of cost, fabrication, just one more thing to bolt on and off. So here is how I do piping, cold piping, silicone couplers. So you can see here, um, this was a pipe I bead rolled with this. It doesn't have to be some big crazy bead roll, but basically what we're doing is giving um, the T-bolt clamp, which will sit to this side of the uh, bead roll, we're giving it something to push against. And it doesn't need much, it just needs some friction. When that boost kicks in, um, it's gonna wanna try and separate, but it has something that it can grip against when you tighten down that T-bolt. And that is literally all you need. Like I said, for 98% of people. I'm sure I'm just leaving myself a little bit of margin of error because I don't always have to be right, nor am I. But you can see that is the end result. So it's basically as simple as this. So this is our bead roller. Um, we're going to load this like this. I only got two hands here. It's just me here tonight. And you tighten this down. And basically all you do, you just turn this thing around. 
I gotta hold it here. You crank the lever. And a lot of times it takes multiple passes to get it. And see how it's starting to develop a bead in there. So what I do um, when I start building my cold side pipe and I find my two ends and I make sure I bead roll them ahead of time because it's really difficult to do a 12 foot section that's welded with three bends in there. Um, and so I just tighten it up for the third time. And that is literally all that you need to create a functional seal. If you're not paying for any other crazy devices, you're saving hundreds of dollars at every joint. You're not welding uh, goofy clamps onto uh, throttle bodies where it's now going to distort the throttle body mechanism and all kinds of crap and make the flange not flat. This is all you need. So you can pick up all your mandrel bends, you can pick up all your silicone couplers, your T-bolts at Motion Raceworks. We do have some throttle bodies with V-bands because we just get an overwhelming amount of requests for them. So I know some guys like to do V-bands and Vanagens for looks. It really cleans up the engine bay. Trust me, I get it. Um, but especially for some of these street cars that have uh, um, non-solid motor mounts, uh, non-engine plates, your car is flexing different than your chassis. So if you have chassis-mounted objects such as turbos, um, such as intercoolers, those two things are wanting to move independently. So please consider putting some silicone couplers in there. If you rigid mount that stuff, everything, you will be sorry in a non-solid mounted engine. Folks, thanks for tuning in to episode two of Motion 360. I hope you learned a few things today. I hope I'm saving you some money, some heartache, some uh, fingertips from not pushing in goofy clamps. And uh, I hope that that'll help you build a more effective uh, cold side on your turbo or supercharge application. Please stay tuned if you like what you saw here. Just do me a favor and share this on your feed, on your Facebook or YouTube. Um, drop us a comment, a like, and uh, keep us going. We like to hear your feedback. I can't thank you enough for tuning in. Please stay tuned. There's more to come.